Oh, shit. Knocked off the head. Oh, the dragon tail coming off. She got it. What kind of... Spit all over myself. Scotty, what kind of a review are you doing here? Why did you pick me? Today we're going on a mother boat. But this ain't no ordinary mother boat. This is a Chinese ancient mother boat. So what is up, you guys? Welcome back to Pick Me Up, Scotty. And I'm Scotty. So finally, something a little different from Zing Bao. Actually, I haven't done a Zing Bao set in a while, right? So many of you are still buying Zing Bao modulars from me. Thank you so much for supporting the store. If you don't know, they have a really good Chinatown series. There's a new one coming up in July. I posted that in the community page. And yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. So if you're bored and you need something a little different, there's always this. You know, you can make this like a floating restaurant for your city. Or maybe you can put this next to your Ninjago docks. I wonder if this would go with the Ninjago dock. But you know, if you're into boats, ships, and ancient looking ones here, then look no further. Let's review this bad boy right now. So this is Sing Pals, the Chinese Royal Dragon Boat. XB25002, 3,325 pieces. And yes, apparently this was a real boat that was absolutely massive that was used in ancient China times by royal families for who knows what. We're gonna to have to look at the History Channel for that one. Zingbao does have a second boat here. I'll review that for you guys. If you like and comment and subscribe, because you know, more subscribers means more entertainment and more videos for you guys. But I'll probably end up reviewing that one anyway. So first of all, both of these boats are a few months old. So when I got this, it was like the first batch. There were some issues. They corrected it in the manual. And hopefully the new batches by now should have been fixed. So if you order it, you know, if you have problems, just let me know or just watch this video and I'll point it out to you. This thing is actually on a stand, as you can see, take it off and we can slide the stand out of the way. So it is cool that they did include a stand. But that just tells you that this thing is probably most likely going to be a display thing. You don't want to be playing with this thing, man. It might fall apart on you. It is fragile as it starts to work its way up. And especially if you're going to move it around and show friends or like try to move it from one place to another. Well, I can pick it up and everything. But you just got to still be a little bit careful with it. And it wants to like bend and flex after a while. So you got to just keep double checking all the pieces. I actually really like the colors. I thought the colors were really good. I like the red. I like the yellow pieces here on the rooftop. I just kind of wish... They could have done it gold because there's some pieces here that are really, really gold. Man, this thing would have looked even more richer if they just did everything in gold on the top. And if you look at the rooftops here, like these parts, yeah, it is very like matching to the whole thing about Chinatown theme. But here we go, just to show you a quick idea of scale and size. Look at this massive boat. You want to be careful because the edges, sometimes they might want to break apart. Seems okay right now. It's got some weight to it. But if you look at the back here, like, yeah, it's out. Oh, oh, even the front, I think, will do the same. Oh, oh. Be careful how you hold this thing. So on the bottom here, it's really cool how they have all the oars right there. My oar pieces had, like, mad scratch marks on some of them. Hopefully your ones are okay. I guess it gives it an old school look, so it's like, it's been through war. There's a reason why they're so loose, yeah? So this thing does have a hand crank on it, and you can crank it, we'll try it out in a second, and I'll show you how that works. Wasn't perfect, a couple of loose ore pieces, and even on the inside, the way it moves, like things were popping off, and the manual, which is here, by the way, there's the manual for you. Smooth sailing. Right away, there's a few corrections in the first few steps, like you have to change the bar, make sure you got the right length so it doesn't bend when you're cranking those oars. Little things like that. Pretty straightforward, easy to follow. And right there by my finger, there is a sticker sheet, very small one that comes with a set. I couldn't even tell I used them, but they're like the signs that you hang at the doors as you go into this boat. Above the oars, you've got the railing, gold railings. And you also got all those little gold pieces in between the oars and even the window pieces. Like all that looks really, really good. There's just enough space in between the structure and the rail to put some minifigures there. And it does come with a bunch of minifigures. We'll see them soon. Then we come to the dragon's head here, which I actually really like. I think it's really cool. The mouth can articulate like that. Oh, it kind of drops down on mine. Or maybe it's too heavy there. But I like how they did the teeth. And he's got a little bit of a blue flame coming out of his mouth right there. And I like the look of his face. It's just the right size. It's nice and big. And the back here, his antlers or his horns and even his, his scales. 
They all can kind of articulate and move a little bit, which is good. Now this boat is not perfect. There are a couple issues. Like for example, the gold pieces, which are really good by the way, the clutch is a little bit like light compared to other pieces. So pieces can fall off really easy, but you do have to be a little bit careful when you're applying pressure here, because it's only a couple pieces. It's not like you're building a full wall there. I need to push it down because I keep holding this thing and it's like flexing and bending as I'm doing this for you guys. But then we keep going around, boom, 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 boom. We come back, let's look at his tail. The way the tail actually kind of curves up, even though it's, yeah, it's not really curved, it's more sharp edges, still looks good. And it does have these little fins that can move up and down. So that's a nice touch to it. But again, it seems to have some loose areas on it. I think the whole thing came off. You gotta kind of just be careful because they're just all being pushed in here. It is a nice tail. And it's kind of like the head, it's nice and big. You know, maybe you could take the head and the tail off, keep it as a boat, or you know, make your own mock dragon out of this thing somehow. Okay, I got the stand back out. I'm gonna put this thing on here because I want to show you how this thing cranks. I had no idea it even cranked until I saw it on the box. But on the tail side, underneath, you pull the crank out. I was like, oh, hey, cool, we can crank this sucker. You stick it in one of the holes here on the side, then you start cranking it like this. Row, row, row your boat. I've, I've done that song too many times on all my boat videos. So there we go, we're cranking, we're rocking, and we're rolling. What's up? So you don't stick it in all the way or else it'll hit that thing. The boy, it'll hit the boy. So it does work. Yeah, you're probably not gonna use it all the time. You could attach your motor to it and see what happens. Now let's look inside to see how this contraption works. Take the crank out of the way. There's a rudder back here. It does move left to right. Yo, if anything, this should have moved. Forget the oars, man. So I think one of the bigger issues here is that you can't really push too hard down on the platform. Pieces might flex. And because I've been holding it for you guys and bending it around here and there, pieces are starting to come loose. If you want to get into the set or if you want to look at it and take it apart, it starts to get a little bit crazy and fragile. And one thing to know is that the boat is actually quite narrow. So the plates are really touching the edges. So if you want to lift this thing off, so many things are going to fall apart on you. So you have to be really, really careful. I'm going to take them off in sections first. So like, we'll take this part off, which is easy. That comes off easy, thankfully. This part is where it gets really tricky. So there's no real wrong or right way to grab it. Cause no matter how you're going to grab it from the rooftop, it'll probably pull off the sides here. The sides will probably pull off structurally. It's not super, super secure. I wish they could have secured that a little bit more. But we're going to try the best way of pulling it from the back here. So I can feel it like kind of stuck there. Plates might want to pull off. Oh, look, I caught it off in one shot right there. Okay. Now this piece right here is not supposed to come off, but it can pop off really easy because it's only being held by the poles. So let's see if I can just take this piece off anyway from underneath. See, I can start to see the rails like on the side. I want to come off with it. Oh yeah, part of the plate there, that's why. There we go, I'm gonna flip it for you so you can see on the inside there. Yeah. It's a lot of empty space. It's a little bit of a, the contraption there. I might have even used the wrong poles there. It's kind of bent a little bit. And the end pieces of the oars themselves are pretty loose. So those have popped off on me. On one side, you can see I put a little bit of blue tack just to hold that. It was popping off a little bit. If it was up to me, I probably would have just kept the oars in a steel position. I probably decorated that into like an even bigger room. You know, you could put it like maybe cannons or treasure chest or a bedroom down there. I don't know. I think the whole rotating the oars thing is really just for looks to, imp to impress your friends. Now it's like super light. All right, let's look at the compartments. So we come to this main room, which is just really like a hallway. It's not really like a real room. I think that was kind of a bummer part just because the boat is so big, but yet it's so narrow. So it's like not much you can actually put inside. And I did have to change a couple of pieces down below here. You can see a little difference of the studs and the colors there. The support wasn't that good. They used, you used these gold flower pieces on the bottom. They, they did not hold up for me. So I just used my own pieces there. I do like the decoration. Again, the color there looks really, really nice. They have little lanterns hanging there on both sides. They do use a couple of little trans clear plates there for the windows. As you come into the room, I'm pretty sure those are seats. They could be tables. It's too narrow. If you're into interiors, 
that's probably the only problem with the set is it is a little bit too narrow. Your pass those seats and there's a little table there for your tea set. Staircase to go up to the next floor. At least the staircase is nice and secure. There's a little cabinet down below. There's nothing inside of it. And next to that is a nice touch of a little flower there. And it looks like a bookshelf there. And that looks like a book. I think, I'm pretty sure that's printed. Yeah, that's print. Printed tile book. And then you go down this very, very, very narrow hallway here. And it's just a couple of like a jar. I'm not even sure if those are seats. Oh yeah, those look like seats. The figures even fit on that, we'll find out. But look at those clear plates. That was kind of a cool effect right there. Now again, it makes it everything down below just held like that, super fragile. So when you're pulling this up, or you're gonna move it around, these can come really, really loose, really, really fast. Thankfully, the room is not too large. It's not too difficult to deal with. And you come upstairs and it comes into this little room right here, which is nothing in it. It's just a hollow, empty room. So it's just like a lookout tower or something. But this, this one actually fits on really nicely here like that. I kind of wish they had made a maybe bigger so you can put something in there make this like a room right now it's just an empty hollow room but they do have a sticker there and then there's like a little decoration piece up here bullseye target and that is it for the lookout tower you know you could just take this piece and be like this is my little shop welcome please come have some tea join me finally come to this small little area and this part's not even really supposed to even come off the boat i just took it off because it did come off easy there's a sticker there, and inside is a instrument. That's cool, that's a printed tile. So the guys can play there while the boat is moving. That's called a guchin, guchin, a guchin, a type of Chinese instrument anyway. It's like when a piano meets a guitar. I do like the design of this. It's very small and simple, but they are being held on by poles. They can pop off the plate really easy, so you do have to be careful with this piece. But I like it, I like the look of it. Oh, I just noticed I forgot to put the gold studs on this side. Dang it. No wonder I had so many extra pieces. I forgot that. That's my fault. That's what it looked like without the gold studs on there. Well, there you go. I caught my own mistakes. I rushed this build, Scotty. How dare you? But there you go. Super small. And again, not supposed to come off. Now we got to try to put these back onto the boat. Okay, little boaty. Don't go breaking on me now. Okay, now we got to put this back here. Should sit just fine. Like so. Go. I like the sound of that snap. Now the trickiest part, you wanna make sure you go down and slide in like that. Don't try to put it straight on because you're probably most likely gonna knock this thing down because it's right next to the plate. And of course, again, the boat's so narrow, you know, you might wanna like kinda try to split it open a little bit. Maybe take this one off first so it's easier for you to manage. We'll slide this here. Maybe I'll grip it from the inside like that. Slide it down. Drum roll, doesn't want to go in, there we go. Good. Popping up on this side, like so. Oh, I just pushed this up. Oh, there we go, it's back on. So yeah, as you can see, that wasn't the smoothest transition. This part, it's a little bit flimsy. You push down on it, so it's probably popped off somewhere inside there. This part is easy to put on, like so. The boat is back together. Fragile, tricky, but looks absolutely fantastic as a display piece. I think that's really cool. Now let's look at the figures. We got a lot of figures to look at, all right? Here we go. First, the guy in white with the fan. These are very different from Lego pieces, even though they're almost exactly the same. Mm, this could cause some issues. The torsos look really different, how they kind of like, they look like they are backwards, by the way, the shape. But the printing on this guy is really good. I like his buckle area. I like his front pattern there, like, I'm not quite sure what he's wearing. And it kind of repeats on the back. So it does like have a wrap around. That's really cool. He's holding a fan. Look at their arms. They have big giant sleeves now. And they can move to left and right, like kind of articulate. So it really does look like he's fanning himself. I like his little goatee and the hat style. Very different, right? Then we come to this guy and he has kind of a gold print on his front and a green tassel hanging on his leg. And look at his face. He's like, eh, <laughs> maybe he's the one that's going to drive this boat. He looks fine, but it is really nice that they're in this era of this boat. You know, they didn't put like random figures that don't match like musicians. Then you got this guy in green here. He says, oh, he must be the oldest guy here with a white beard and white eyelash. Got this the sand green look actually to him. I do like the printing on him, his robe wrapping around him as well. 
And we got another guy here. He's got a scruffy beard. And he looks like he has accessories hanging on him. It looks like keys or something, you know? He's the key master. Maybe I used the wrong color on his arm there. A little bit blue. But anyway, he looks fine. You know, all these guys have the same type of hats on top of them. Just so you know. This guy looks like he's been drinking. He's holding some alcohol. He's got the red cheeks. He's drunk. More of a simple printing on his body. Again, the nice thing about this whole set is that every face is kind of different. So that's good. Now we come to the painter. who's on his journey to paint the map of the world. More sophisticated printing on him. The bow and the... In the front that's wrapping around him on the back that's really cool got a nice big tom Selleck mustache there yeah then you got this guy here who's holding this tile that is a print by the way he looks like he's the navigator the chinese chris columbus more of a robe style printing on the front but so far so good on all the printing on these guys he looks really good no printing on the back of him and finally you got this guy who's sleeping wake up yo he's the probably the master of the boat just being like, everyone just go to work. Let me get some rest here. But he's in blue. I like his print. Looks fine. Last but not least, you got the stand. It's pretty secure. No issues, no problem. It's nice that they did include it. So, you know, put the boat on here if you want to. But like you can see, don't put the boat on there. Keep it on the side. Maybe just have it with the figure standing there. Could be a figure stand. There you go. The ultimate figure stand. Okay, I've got all the figures on the set. Let's see how they look, right? Start here first in the front. This guy just pondering what he's gonna do with his life in the future. If he's gonna sail away or not. You got the guy drinking his alcohol there and another guy in green. And you can kind of see it's really tight to get him in, but they do fit. And again, unfortunately, pushing them down, the plates might flex a little bit. It's a little bit tricky to get them in there. They can't fit inside. There's this guy here, second guy in green. Hello, where are we going? We got the painter there on that side. He's painting the island that's far away in the distance over there. There's the guy fatting himself on the balcony and that's pretty much all the room you're gonna get to play around with on the set, on the exterior part of it. Oh, the sleeping guy, where is the sleeping guy? He's taking a nap right there on top of the dragon's head. Now let's see if we can put these guys on the inside of the set, which is probably gonna really suck because they're it's gonna be hard to get in there. Let's just pretend the guys are on the boat. I had to take these pieces off again to show you. So I'll take this top piece off here and I put the guy inside. So there's the guy inside there. Now the thing about this section that does suck is because there's no secure pieces holding down these plates, you can come off really easy if your whole thing can shatter on you. Easiest way to get the guy inside there is just to, what? Yeah, that's, that's how I got him in. I cheated, yo. So I took, put him there and then just put this piece back on here. Bad, Scotty. There's the painter in the hallway. So it does get really, really narrow. And I put a couple guys there. So you can fit them in properly, but they'll just be like chilling. And their butts hang on the edge of the chairs. And finally right here in this hallway, look at that. They're touching their feet together. How cute is that? Yeah, that's a little bit too narrow, man. They're like right next to each other. You want a drink? What? I can't hear you. Do you want a drink? Then the final piece that's in front of the boat there, the guy playing the instrument. And at least you can fit a couple more figures there on the side. So there's a little bit of room there. But again, be careful with this because it's on pillar, so it can pop off pretty easy too. Everything wants to pop off on this thing like that. All right, it's dimension time. This boat spans across three base plates. If you count the tip of the tail all the way to the head, that is 84 studs in length. Well, roughly around 84 studs. Yeah, this is pretty long. Now for the width of the boat itself, it's kind of around 20 studs. If you wanted to actually include the oars from one end to the other end, it's gonna span on two base plates. It is around 42 studs. All right, let's check the height. So here are my one by four bricks. I'm gonna stack them right around here. Yeah, that's about it right there. That is 28 bricks in height without the stand. Let's put the stand on this thing and see how high it is. All right, there's the stand. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more here and that is, woo, 34 bricks in height. There you go. 
That's your dimensions for your floating restaurant in your city. Another video finally complete. You know what that means? It's time for the drop test. I have finished filming all the details. I sure hope I have. All the figures are on here. This thing has been moved around so much. It's probably going to shatter. And here we go. Oh, this is going to really suck. I always say that, but this is just for you guys. So see you later in five, four, three, two, one. Oh yeah, I'm going to do this without the stand. There's no way I can do it with a stand. I'll probably be even worse. I, I don't want to let this thing go, man. All right, here we go. Good thing is, it didn't shatter like I thought it would. A lot of small pieces did fall off. The tempo here, the head here, this piece there. This part kind of moved there. You know, this part got loose here, that got loose there. This, these got loose here. All the rooms came off there. Okay, cleanup time. That is the Singbao Dragon boat for you. Some loose clutch pieces on the gold parts. Fragile if you're applying pressure to it. If we don't apply too much pressure to it, it's still pretty okay. What do you guys think? I like it. I think it actually looks really good. You know, I just might just really turn this into like a floating restaurant, put some more food in here and just keep it by the city. Maybe take out the oars and the stand. And there you go. It's available on BreakMeUpScotty.com. And until next time, you guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be back with more. Break me out. One little piece just fell off, and I don't know. Where did it go? Where does it belong? I know it came off the top. I'm sure you guys can spot it. This piece fell off. Scotty, am I stolen design? No? Oh, great. I'm getting hungry, man. How come we're talking so long? You finished with this review yet? I'm hangry. I need something to eat. Here, have a minifigure. Oh, good. Yum, 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 yum. Ah. How cool would it have been if you spun that crank and the dragon's mouth would open and close and the rudder would move left and right and the oars would move. That would be amazing. <laughs>